Welcome to today's devotion. We are looking at Paul's letter to the Ephesian church. and Today we're looking at chapter 5. And uh, as such, let's pray and get into it together. Lord, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for the grace that you extend to us that is indeed transforming us day by day according to your plan, according to your ways, that we may be the children you have destined us to be. And as we go into your word today, Lord, we pray that you once again open our hearts and minds to grow in our understanding of you. And we pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who lives within us and among us, the King of kings, Lord of lords, and ruler of all. Amen. Paul writes in chapter 5, Therefore be imitators of God as dearly loved children, and walk in love as Christ also loved us and gave himself for us, a sacrificial and fragrant offering to God. But sexual immorality and any impurity or greed should not even be heard of among you, as is proper for saints. Obscene and foolish talking or crude joking are not suitable, but rather giving thanks. For know and recognize this, every sexually immoral or impure or greedy person who is an adulterer does not have an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty arguments, for God's wrath is coming on the disobedient because of these things. Therefore, do not become their partners, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth, testing what is pleasing to the Lord. Don't participate in the fruitless works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what is done by them in secret. Everything exposed by the light is made visible, for what makes everything visible is light. Therefore it is said, get up, sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Pay careful attention then to how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. And don't get drunk with wine, which leads to reckless living, but be filled by the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making music with your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of Christ. Well, this is a lot for Paul to write as we look at this. Beginning with this particular chapter, he makes it a point that we are to be imitators of God as his family, or he, as he says it, his dearly loved children. And this is very important because to understand what he means here by this, because as soon as we come into verse three, he says, but sexual immorality and any impurity or greed should not be even heard of among you. So within three verses, he contrasts the love. And in this case, sexual immorality and greed. Let's take a look at it one more time. Just see how he, how he compares or contrasts, I should say, the first three verses. Here's verse one. Therefore, be imitators of God as dearly loved children and walk in love as Christ. Well, first one, be imitators of God as dearly loved children. We are his family. We are his family, his dearly loved children. Verse two, and... Also, not only be imitators, but walk in love, which is how we treat one another. So in light of the fact that we are God's children and imitators of 
him, we having that same love are to live that out with one another. As Christ also loved us and gave himself for us. That's key. Love was sacrificial. According, I'm sorry, as a sacrificial and fragrant offering to God. Sacrifice on our behalf to the glory of God. That's the model. Then verse three, but sexual immorality and any impurity or greed should not even be heard of among you as is proper for saints. Now you have to understand the power of sexual rebellion that that we read about specifically in Genesis 6. I'm going to go there just to remind us because it it is so profound. We talk about Genesis 3 with regards to rebellion, and it is the initial rebellion. But Genesis 6 is just as powerful. Genesis 6 says, When mankind, humanity, when man began to multiply on the earth and daughters were born to them, The sons of God, this is the spiritual rebellion, the Elohim, if you will, referred to in Job, saw that the daughters of mankind were beautiful and they took any they chose as wise for themselves. And the Lord said, my spirit will not remain with mankind forever because they are corrupt. Their days will be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth both in those days and afterwards when the sons of God came to the daughters of mankind who bore children to them. Now, this is a huge uh, violation of the created order. God is a God of order. God is not a God of chaos. God is a God of of blessing and structure and order always for the purpose of love. So when you read this, you read that the sexual perversion that came into the world did not come from God and didn't even originate with humanity, but came in through a violation of the natural order from the spiritual realm. And if you look at Jewish tradition, there were specific beings that taught humanity very specific skills of rebellion. One of those skills was witchcraft. The word for that is pharmaceutical. We get the word pharmacy from it. In other words, Humanity was taught how to take various things in this world and create drugs. Drugs can be beneficial to be sure, but we definitely have a drug problem and have had a drug problem for all of our history. That that bondage to drugs did not come from God, but from a rebellious spirit, a rebellious purpose, that taught humanity these skills. In addition, there were spiritual beings that taught humanity the art of seduction. Seduction is not something that originated with human beings, nor does it come from God. It was something that came from a rebellious act In the spiritual realm, this is according to Jewish tradition and was taught to humanity. And if you take a look at it, seduction is very much that. It teaches, you take any kind of seduction, men to women, whatever the case may be, there is a skill to it that was taught. And because it is so destructive, Paul constantly brings this up with regards to being pure of sexual immorality that we don't want anything any longer to do with that manner of living. And it's not just sexuality. He goes on to talk about greed. One of the other things that was taught to humanity was how to effectively kill one another, the making of weapons. That did not come from God, did not originate with humanity, but it came from a rebellious spiritual teaching 
value spiritual being, if you will. This is all Jewish tradition in which Paul writes from saying now that in Christ, we no longer live according to that, those, those means of rebellion that were taught to humanity, but rather we live in the light and Christ himself demonstrated how to do just that. My friends in Christ, no longer do we have to be enslaved to the ways of this world that keep us frustrated, that keep us in fear, that keep us in worry, that keep us coveting and jealous. But we live a new life, a life of peace, a life of being free from being pushed and pulled and manipulated by our desires to live for him and him alone. And my prayer today for all of us is that we grow in our ability to live in that truth. Until next time, may God's peace be with you. I'll see you then.